Side militarised, wide out Pericles. Pericles and militarised fighting it out for the moment. Nugget bursting through and here he is, Celestial Legend. Bombing them wide out, Celestial Legend won the Doncaster. Welcome to Vet Doctor, behind the curtain look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host Scoot, I've got Johnny Walter in studio. The virus, the, um, the super spreader. Three weeks. I don't know whether you gave it to me. You say I gave it to you. I reckon you gave it to me. I don't leave the house. You see me. Neither do I. Where I get do I sick. go? Don't know. Literally nowhere. It's filthy wherever you go. DK, winter struck down in Melbourne. How are you, brother? Yeah, we are. Certainly has scooped uh, into 17s, 18s every day back down here now, which is only in the run-up to, um, uh, what is it, Warnable. So it's probably the right right weather. Mm. Oh, no. No, another quiet week, wasn't it? Tall poppy syndrome was well out in force at the uh, yearling sales and then the Ooh. Certain participants whinging as usual and the racing, uh, Saturday night racing, but just another week, just another week. Nico, how are you, buddy? How's the footy go? I'm good. Uh, we got beat by 10 goals, so we can only improve for what we did last Saturday, I think. So, um, no, it's uh, it's all good here at the moment. It's just it was pouring rain as we were coming in, so had to sort of try and dodge that as we uh, made the way in. But, um, yeah, good racing from Bendigo on Saturday, obviously the championships. It was a big week in racing, wasn't it? Saturday morning, I thought, how are they going to run this meeting? And then... The track, the times have come out like it was just a soft track, not even a heavy track. So, yeah, amazing stuff up there in uh, in Sydney. Who is compared to what happened? How many would they get? Twenty four mils or something overnight Saturday night at Sale, and it was a soft five, and they called them off. They got two hundred mils and upgraded to what a soft seven or something. Just extraordinary how those Flemington and and Randwick and those those tracks drain in uh, two thousand and twenty four. Hmm, crazy. I had a, probably threes on. Looking at the forecast, Ooh. that it'd be, it'd be off, and then especially the, when Moody sending those videos out, and funny. then they weren't allowed to get the gallop horses on the well, track. They wouldn't, they wouldn't gallop a horse on it. They wouldn't <laughs> re- release a penetrometer half an hour after the after the uh, scratchings closed, which is highly unusual. They wouldn't let a horse gallop on for like two hours after it. So they obviously had huge queries of whether it would go ahead. They were sort of just saying, "Trust us, trust us," which is, you know, I think everyone's justified in having trust issues there. Mm. And then, and then <laughs> they race race one, and you think it's a six. It's like what? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Yeah, well, do you do you give them praise for um for, for racing, or do you say, well, how come it's a six often there when when you've had no rain for the week? Mm. Anyway, <laughs> hard whatever. to figure out. It was but, great. Um, I think we've settled it for once and for all. We don't need any more further proof. The greys are dominant in the wet. Chain of lightning for Walt. DK theory. Celestial legend. They're both grey, DK. You've been saying it for a long time and there's been some data experts, good friend Dan O, blankets, you know, blankets are theory. There is fast and slow grey horses, but the the fast ones get faster and and it was, they got the lot. Uh, Apparently, apparently, (laughs) we've we've all suffered from confirmation bias after what happened on the weekend, confirmation bias because, you know, they won when the data, the data says that there's no advantage. I mean, mean, Robbie Robbie Waterhouse put out that article a couple of years ago, I don't even remember. Where he'd said about the greys with the softer feet and they mm. appreciate getting their toes in the ground, just something to do with the breed and that. I think he'd know because Gay is married to not one of the top trainers in the country. So, <laughs> um, and if it was easy as data about everything, then the data, then, you know, Dan would be building villages in Fiji and he'd be retired and, you know, well, stuff like that. So it's not easy as data. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he went and debunked the, uh, the mayor's in four, in four mayors. He went and found a way to debunk that as well. You know, data's open to interpretation, but uh, no, the greys, what, what, as soon as he potted them in the morning, there it was. I mean, you go and open your, we know you pot anything, you say anything like that, you open yourself up, <laughs> home goes $26 in the big race, followed by Celestial Legend, which is, I never took my eyes off it. It was some ride from through where angels fear to tread up the straight there by Tyler Schiller, my God. So uh, no, well, one for the greys and there was plenty of people out in support of the greys on the weekend. A smart person once said to me, he said, like, in regards to data people, he said, you know, normally they say, oh, four of their last six you know, say Souths are four of their last six against the Eastern Suburbs or whatever, it's usually four out of seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, like they, they just condition it into four out of their last six to suit their uh, suit their narrative. So it's, it's, the data is very easily manipulated. Mm. Did like uh, Tyler Schiller. I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble it on uh, mediocrity. mediocrity. I thought that was an absolute pearler from uh, Schiller the Thriller. And he's a big KFC man, so uh, he's, he's back, back squarely in the team now. Chiller. 49 kilos. Crazy. That's exactly like TC. I don't know how many times uh, he sent me photos of himself in the KFC drive through on the way home from a race meeting after he's had to ride light or something. It's obviously the, the go-to cheat meal for a lot of these fellas because they're on the road too, right? So uh, good, good on them. Um, yeah, obviously uh, much talk about Winks and the, um, the, the $10 million sale. 
Oh, just goes to show, don't need extra prize money. I think they're all uh, going okay. I did hear that uh, John Massara said it's tough to make a, a dollar on the, uh, the Wolf Den um, little interview with him, but if they're throwing around that money uh, when everyone else is uh, struggling to make ends meet, I'm, t I'm tipping we don't need more money in prize money, and I think they're going all right. So the breeders just need to sort of pull back a bit because it's never been harder at the moment for punters. What about uh, Scooby-Doo, Jimmy Stewart, or whatever his name was? He's Johnny Stewart, Jimmy Stewart, the uh, the Yank the Tank with his with his tweet that set the world in motion. Who wants like, a horse? Oh, my God. You just wanted someone. I was hoping it was Bjorn <laughs> or someone who'd say, Mate, I hate Yanks. Jam them up your ass. I just wanted one person to come out and say, you know, and they all just went to bend a knee and, and got the warm milk out and went uh, lapping it up, wasn't it? It was, oh, it is what it is. It, it, he, you read his tweet. He didn't even structure it like that. He was asking you and I yeah. who we would send it to. And then, and then, the then all of a sudden the trainers. come grovelling with the knee pads on. And, yeah, like, he, mate, surely, like, Kieran Ma. Do you, do you, come on, mate. you got 700, 800 horses. Do you need his six as well? Like, God probably damn. to get it. Probably to get a yeah a slipper on it. He does. Well, he, he needs a lot more than six hundred to get a slipper on. He's already proved that, hasn't he? But at least he had Spywire, the eight hundred meter horse that'll win a Ipswich Class One next prep. Good luck to it. I was happy for you, uh, Walt, because I thought, oh well, beauty. The Winx, the Winx horse is going to stay because you're often, you know, so upset that all the Japanese and all the foreigners are buying the horse. So the happiest man in town would be John Walter because the breed's stronger in Australia now. Well, Japanese so aren't known for being imbeciles either. So <laughs> why would you pay ten million for a foal that uh, didn't look anything special to me? And I've not the greatest eye in the world but if they wanted it they'd buy winks you know they wouldn't buy the the offshoot they'd, they'd go straight to the source which they've proven <laughs> to do you know so um yeah like they did with yankee rose right they just took yankee rose back home and turned her into a, a super mare i think she was already a super mare in, in australia but uh good to see the breeders uh are going well well that's, that's not the problem that you gotta understand i mean people potting i mean the tall poppy syndrome was was just sky high there and it was just ridiculous i mean that is the yearling sale. That is for that top end, high end of the market. It's for very wealthy people who play at that that end of the market. Now, I used to be the ones saying, you know, look at these people throwing their money around like that. But when you get to see these people, you know some people, they've got hundreds of millions of dollars and they choose to spend it on horse racing and that's where they want to buy it. They could spend it on other things, on bloody Formula One cars or doing other stuff like the crypto guys, but they choose to spend it on horse racing. And uh, I just, I just, I can't understand the all. There's the, there's levels of yearling sales. There's levels of syndication. If you want to buy one percent of a horse, you can. But for the, for the, for the jealousy towards the people who've got plenty of money and who choose to spend it on horse racing and at that top end of the market, I just, I just thought it was, especially with Deb. I mean, you know, she, she, she that, the story was just fantastic of her buying that horse back and keeping it and for her family. And you know, she can't help who her dad was and all, all the money their family got, and she chooses to spend it as she wants to spend it. She wants to buy the filly, so good luck to her. It's I agree the, completely. It's all the crap that's attached to it, though. So there's a hundred million in sales. There's probably fifty of it that's not real. That's the problem. It's it's well, uh, that's mate, that's it's, I mean, that's that's one that's thing you problem. learn from the start, isn't it, Walt? It is a whole, you know reeling sales. It's all that sort of stuff, but it's nothing. What that Jimmy? What happened with Jimmy and all that? That was all crap, you know. But um, when uh, Bill Vlahos yeah, the five was, million, yeah, exactly, got bitted up by Sangster or something, you know, that was all we all knew. That was a circus. But I thought, I thought the real emotion and the the story, and you know, that she just they, she did decide to sell it, then she couldn't because she's so attached, and uh, she's got the money to be able to do it. And you know, that's um, good on her. I thought it was terrific. Oh, I think good luck to her too. Absolutely, good right. luck to her. Who she? Yeah, if that's what she want to do. Bang, good she's luck. a blossom all over the water. It so. It's like you or I spending hundred dollars on a on a meal, probably. But good luck. No, to exactly her. right, Walt. Exactly right. Until you read, like, I'm not big noting or anything. I do know I've got to know a couple of people who've got a lot, a lot of money, like, like over hundred million dollars, right? They've got a lot of money, and it is like spending, going, taking, a, taking your family out for dinner to spend four hundred, five hundred thousand on a horse, you know. So that people want to spend their money at that top end. Good luck to them. You get to spend it on other things like, you know, stacks of other things, buying islands or buying boats or doing whatever they choose to spend on horse racing. Hmm. I just don't think we need to uh, just keep uh, smashing up prize money and smashing up punters and making the game so hard and therefore pouring on more product and decimating the quality of um, what we've got. Different sort argument of, to what DK, I know where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, it's slightly different, different but yeah. um, it all sort of You don't like to glorify it from our percent, say, you know, this is, this is how much they're spending so yeah. they deserve to get huge prize money yeah. when... That's you know, it, go, it goes to one or two percent of the, the the return of the population. It's not even going to them a lot of the time. It's going to who knows, but it doesn't get distributed evenly. Mm. And then it sort of leads me on to the other point, and DK has already touched upon it, and the news has come out that they're going to push into Saturday Night Racing. They're going to do a trial over uh, the December months when uh, everyone's sort of up and about. Um, the good thing is they're going to shift racing from uh, the quieter days and the low turnover meetings, and they're going to push them to Saturday night. So I think that's a tick. But um, 
Yeah, there's definitely an oversupply problem at the moment. Sand down yesterday, the field sizes were completely cactus. Um, Trev Lawson and I, and we're all talking over the Easter break at how many dual acceptors and how many scratchings there were. I think there were 80 on Good Friday alone. And I think the real number would be somewhere between 150 or 200 or even beyond that for the four days at Easter. So the push tonight racing is another stretch. Um, and it was an interesting tweet. There's on the thread from racing.com. It's interesting that they're asking people in the social domain main um, because you'd think they'd consult them first but um, what are your thoughts about Saturday Night Racing? Ben Millam, um, he's quite vocal on Twitter sometimes when he, um, he he's not afraid to sort of come forward and talk but this is an interesting one from his perspective. Pretty measured too, right? This, I yeah, like this Ripper. Response. He said, oh, we've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday night meetings along with the original day meetings, Twilight Sunday meeting. Participants will be looking forward to a well-earned rest on Race Free Monday where jockeys can indulge in a cool 24 unpaid jump outs at Cranbourne on a Monday morning and I think there's there's further Packenham jump outs uh, on the Tuesday as well another jockey replied directly under that so the burnout factors uh big for them and even um someone like Sean Dressler who's tied up with uh, the Mick Price yard um she's there saying cro- like crikey um this this puts more pressure on us as well and they're a super stable I'd say Price Ken are a super stable that can um cope with that but Within those 63 respondents to that tweet about Saturday night racing, there's a lot of um, labour pains from sh- staffing shortages. And when you just sit back and look at it, like, crikey, like when, four days of night racing mixed in with the usual grind of up at 4 a.m., it makes you wonder, like, we're already going to the more tax solution, more tax, more product. I just don't think it's great governance. And where the, we hear lots about welfare and, and looking after people, well, this is at odds again. Uh, uh, to Jockeys those are sort the of biggest statements. winners out of this prize money war because they've got no risk, right? And they're automatically getting pay rises. They get pay rises anyway. Plus, every time prize money goes up, they automatically, if they're any good, get pay rises. And if people like Mellum, I'm obviously a little bit privileged that I know a lot of these guys quite well. I've never heard them so angry towards racing. They just they're just over it, you know, just constantly. Whereas before. You know, most of them you'd be getting a call once, twice a week interested in, you know, whether it's Wednesday, Saturday, talking about races, talking about things that happened. You don't get that anymore. They're all just tired. They're all really just over it. It's um, it, it can only be this. And I've not, you know, asked them directly. It's not sort of my business, but it just, you know, it's just there's a shift in the way everyone, even in the industry, their love towards the game seems to be reducing, which is a bad sign, isn't it? Because, mm. you know, their love attracts the love of, you know, you and I from the outside looking in. Could there be a jockey strike, DK? Do you reckon jockeys might? But they're the ones that aren't going to strike. Who's going to strike? Or how, 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 how do they stop this? Hang on. They're, they're Where do I fortune. start? I'll start, I'll start with Mellon. All right, I'll start with Mel. Love Mellon. Get on well with him. Know him. Know Mellon. Mellon. Last month, the month of March, went to the provincials three times for the month. Had nine rides. That was one, four of them were on Packenham Cup night, which is hardly a provincial meeting anyway. It's Packenham Cup. So he went to three provincial meetings in his point. In, in February, he went to two meetings and had three rides. He never rode from McKinnon. He had a ride in the McKinnon Stakes and had two or three months off. Don't know whether he's enforced or whatever. Hadn't ride. Okay, and here he, here he is, blowing about the workload. Like he rides Saturdays and Wednesdays and Metro only. You know, you won't see B Higgins blowing. You won't see Jay Noon and Jack Hill, you know, these blokes blowing. Okay, the the, the the VGA has already come out and said the jockeys overall support it because those blokes are starving. Those middle tier jockeys need more more meetings or not. They need to, more opportunities to get more rides, which would be at meetings like that. That's the first one, the jockeys. Second one, it's not extra. These are meetings that have been moved to a Saturday night. So they're not additional meetings. Um, mm. Strappers, isn't I, every, every, every time I get a bill from a trainer, there's strappers fee from every race day. You know, they say the strappers want to go. Do you want to go? I'll give you 100 or 150 or 120, whatever it is to go to the races. And if not, sometimes the trainers take themselves. But And then they're going to make turn into a music festival as well. Like there's four meetings over the summer times that are going to turn into a music festival. They're going to have big bands, big music acts on, um, you know, cash in on that holiday time. This is, you know, this is a four meeting uh, uh, test. Um, as we know, everyone, everyone's betting still on Saturday night. So they're trying to tap into that. So I just thought, again... The overreaction, the, the the first instinct to blew about anything different, to change anything, the first instinct of most participants is to complain. So, um, but Mellum, like Mellum, I thought it was a bit rich come from Mellum. I'd like to see B Higgins and Jack Hill and those boys think of, uh, about a provincial race meeting on a Saturday night rather than Mellum. Nico, your thoughts? You, your old man's in in the game. 
Yeah, I knew DK was coming in off the long run there. I could just see him steaming uh, sitting here. Uh, <laughs> look, I think DK is probably right. Like it's, I think they're going to move from Thursday night to Saturday night. But what I, but looking at what I read in the article, that's what it seemed like. So yeah, it's not like they're adding a meeting. And if they are, there's probably, you know, some case for them to, to maybe blow up if they are, but it doesn't sound like they are. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, well, it depends what they are. If there's, if there's five, 58s and three maidens. Well, the, the big stables aren't really that far impacted. But if no, it's local, you know, if local trainers, activities. you bring your horse across the road and you take it home and you're done. And uh, do you, like in the old days when Paddy, Paddy and that were Boogie's Clark Scoot, that, that was commonplace. You'd go to the races, they'd go to the pub, have something quick to eat, and all go and work at the dogs, all the punters would go from the races to the dogs or the races to Mooney Valley trots. Like it was a commonplace thing to do the double header on a Saturday night. I remember doing it a couple of times when I was working at the races. They had a couple of Saturday night meetings we had to work to. It was a big day, but it was commonplace. So it's not mm. um, it's not that far, far out, far out of a thing. And, you know, Toowoomba racing and everyone wants to bet on Ascot. Why well, not bet on Cranbourne? Of course, as you know. Would the best thing for the game then just to have a blanket and say no racing Monday and Tuesday and then just get everyone so hungry for Wednesday through to, through to Sunday? And they everyone don't have knows enough, that. Like, um, like, say, in Victoria, they wouldn't have enough staff that are officials to do that. Like that's probably mm. going to be their issue. I would have thought. Like, how many like photo finish guys, all that sort of thing that makes the race they operate. You, could, I think the problem is if you stretch them so thin, then mistakes start to happen, and you're official. So I think that's probably where they got to look into more than they have enough horses, they have enough jockeys, they have enough trainers that will run at the meetings. Do they have enough officials to stretch that far? Say if there's three meetings on a Saturday and all that, because that's that's when the big mistakes will start to happen. I would have thought, and um, that's that's probably the thing with me. For someone who used to work in that industry as well, being a cameraman, like I think that's where they probably should look into as a bit as well, because there, there's definitely enough participants to to run a meeting. It's just whether there's enough of the other side as well. Mm, it's interesting. I guess time will tell because Queensland are going to start pushing to the Friday Saturday race model and then New South Wales are sort of, you know, they're stuck a little bit in the old way of doing what things. What are Gold Coast going to do, Scoot? They're going to do something similar, aren't they? They Gold don't Coast? want Friday night. They're, they're happier with Saturday, Saturday as day. an option but not sub, uh, Friday night and they they are happier to look at Saturday night mm. as an option than Friday night. They say they're a Saturday race club. Yeah, right. Because their attendance and all their sales and they're already getting the sort of the, that bucks bucks crew and they're, they're tapping it out because a lot of the problems at the moment is race clubs have become events businesses and there's just no – there's not enough cohesion between, I guess, punting, putting on the show and, yeah, it's just it's, – it's sort Twilight of – Twilight makes sense for Gold Coast. Like it just makes sense, so, you know, that like the same sort of – I think they, what are they looking to come in two races before the end of the Metro program or something like that? Hmm. That 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 sort of timing would make sense here, wouldn't it? Like because you get the warmer climate and the you know the they end up here and then end up in surface or whatever afterwards. It just makes sense. Hmm. They do say it's a test DK, but you watch once the it's a success, which it sounds like it should be if they support it with bands and throw money at most things um, and a bit of marketing dollars. It, it should work, um, just like the the you know the ninth race nine races or it used to be eight races. Now it's nine. Now it's ten. It's just more, 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 and then more and more, more, more tax. And you know, so, I, was saying, I wasn't objecting against yeah. the Saturday night racing and when talking about it's just an overload across the board and mm. maybe Mellon, like, I don't know, I don't know him at all, but um, he could, he does have a set of balls on him, so maybe he does think he's think, talking on behalf of everyone and, you know, potentially it's not against the Saturday night in particular, it's just just they keep adding things, I guess, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Saturday night racing, I think it's, it's going to come. Got to try and keep turnover up somehow, I suppose, Walt, don't they? It's crashing through the well, floor. Well, yeah, so, they do, but this know, is not. Poker machine mentality. That's the problem, and like I think New South Wales is averaging like sixteen meetings a week at the moment, and we don't have ever Monday or Tuesday off. They don't have that, and then they do have the trials. And what we have stretch here, as I don't look at it as close as you do, you guys do in Melbourne, but our jockey ranks, mate. There's about five jockeys in Sydney who you can back, and outside of Sydney, there's about three. So you know the the jockey ranks are spread so thin. They run two country meetings within two hundred k's of each other often, and you know you got. 14 jockeys in a race and 12 of them are lucky to, you know, whether they sh they're, they're really struggle. They're all 5% riders. It's, it's quite crazy. So mm. they're, they're the meetings I got the objection with. Yeah, I did have an interesting conversation with a um, one of sort of the leading PRA's um, finance persons last week and, and they basically said to me that um, they are competing, that they see one of their biggest competitors as poker machines, which I found, um, yeah, quite, quite interesting. 
in terms of yeah, the, you know where where the where the gambling dollars being spent. So that's a good race. The first time I sort week. of thought about it. Well, so there was a race this week. I can't remember what day it is because I'm all, always poorly prepared. A benchmark fifty class two with boosted prize money. <laughs> so you've got it's go like you. It's just how uh, do you fit into so it's that? Class two and above. Mm. Class two and above. So you can't be a maiden class one racing at a benchmark fifty. And it's got boosted prize money. Like you're actually encouraging horses that maybe should have been moved on or they're at best picnic horses. It's um, I just don't understand it. I don't understand the logic to making that race be, be in existence, let alone promoting it. Mm. The field size at the moment, there, there's a definite problem with deduct with um, dual acceptors, and uh, it's just the program at the moment. If you speak to anyone that's been in the game for a long time, they're just sort of scratching their heads, and uh, I'm sure they'll get work their way through it eventually. But at the moment, uh, the back end of the week is is just a nightmare. So, anyway, that's enough of the uh, I guess the industry uh, chat at the moment. Let's uh, have a look at a uh, bit of. The future of what's going to happen. So let's uh, d- doom it on this Saturday. Uh, we've got um, quite disturbing footage of Donny. I thought he was going to uh, channel his inner mug punter last week, who um, was a bit of a uh, bit of a nude shot go around once uh, they <laughs> once they once he My he's, is he's, he's true to his word. Off me for showing it to her. He's true to his word. He said that he'd. Uh, do a preview nude if Sydney races went ahead, and there is a there is a nude slug shot. Yeah, a shot of Mark Punner circulating shot. on the internet if you can find it. So, wow, we he um, he's a man of his word and he's uh, he's not scared. Chain of light was a beauty for you last week. So we head to day two of the championships uh, this week at Randwick. Good news is the weather's better. Uh, tough weekend for you, Nico, at uh, Caulfield. A couple of mares uh, didn't quite run up to the mark. DK was close to the mark. That naughty horse, uh, Russian Meteor. The Russian was. Naughty behind the gates. I think now he's he's had a bit of a ban, DK, but I thought he went super. We're off to Bendigo Saturday, which uh, the fields look deep and strong there. So it'll be interesting to see if a pattern emerges there because uh, he can bet up with confidence at that track. Um, Starry Eyes was uh, a bit one battered. It took a while to sort of get out, but um, hopefully uh, Celestial uh, saved, um, definitely saved my bacon. So hopefully some listeners sort of cha- um, got onto that one. I'm going to be off to Adelaide this week. Adelaide uh, Carnival starts to heat up, and the top sports team as they need to lift. Uh, Real Asmon was uh, their sole winner last week. So hopefully someone's uh, tuned into that. I think it was a bet of about 500 at uh, 650 on that one. Uh, top Sport is uh, our major sponsor of the show. They've got the protest payout top. Pluck and uh, they're Australian owned operators. So make sure you bet local with them. And good news is we've got a betting tournament on the horizon. So we'll uh, announce more details in the coming weeks. But uh, looks like we'll uh, have a bit of a shootout in the uh, the winter carnival over uh, yeah the uh, sort of the May sort of June time of the year. So can't wait for uh, the Brisbane winter what carnival. What month is to kick it now? Off. What's that? What month is it now? We're in early April. Augusta Masters. Okay. Easter. I, thought, I swear to God, I would have put my money. Easter. It was March. Easter but then yearling I sales. Yeah, it was April Fool's Day was last week, wasn't it? So it has to be April. Yeah. It feels like trust. April Fool's Day has been going for uh, about 11 days. Yeah. The horse on the platform. That was. There's another thing we should the kick up for. He couldn't even afford a train ticket, the poor bugger. Maybe the horses should be getting paid <laughs> prize money directly. <laughs> yeah, that was a strange one at Warwick Farm Station. Can, it's been a lot of news. That happened before the championships. So she, someone's gone in her stable, Open let it. out all these horses. They've staged. known about it. Peter Valandis. Well, no, but they haven't said anything until after the champ. Like, like if you're a punter and you know someone's gone rambling like through her stable, you're probably a little bit worried about what's going to happen to the rest of her horses. But anyway, mm. yeah, I thought I thought Peter Valandis was a marketing exercise to let everyone know that the championships are still on. Put racing was Min's the one who released the footage. Mm. That's weird too, isn't it? He must be a big racing man mm. who's also it trying was to kill Rose. Funny the way he packaged up, but it was, it was incredibly lucky, wasn't it? How was the presence of the horse? How was how relaxed was it? He was just cruising around. Big train coming through. Could have been real there, ugly. Face on, face on the train under the Warwick Farm so yeah. you couldn't make it up. Yeah, then go any sort of which way if you've worked with them before. Bendigo, Saturday, let's straighten the wheels here. Off the track, benchmark, 84 handicap, race six. Gaza Blank is a favourite here, $4.60. End Assembly is $6.00. Second pick, Baldino, $7.50. Philosopher, $10.00. It is me, one of our horses, 
$10. Drawn the Car Park, $18. Yucky. Red Hot Nick, $12. Sparring, $13. Wolflands, $13. Miss Chrissy, $14. Senegalia, uh, $15. And Samillion, $18. This looks an absolute ripper. Nico Garza Blanca. We're going up to uh, Waltz Neck of the Woods. And here he is, outside leader. Yeah, this was uh, Blinkers on first time, settled on speed. Just got run down by a horse. I think that's better on wet ground than he is. If you look at him here, he's a massive horse. Um, and it, most of his better form is on the dry track. So um, he kicks away here, but the other horse just kind of gets a bit better, gets the better of him late. He's back to 1,100 meters, but it should be a very fast run race. This you got Philosopher, who should set up a really fast early tempo up from, you know, 955 and 1,000 meter races. And then there's a few others that could possibly go with him, like um, Real Gun, Similion even Red Hot Nick, Mrs. Christie. So there could be quite a fast speed. I think from barrier number six, he probably just parks him behind that. He showed good early speed in his last run. Um, so I think he's probably settled around midfield here in, in a race where they could go quite fast. It could be more run like a 1,200. So second up, um, Blink is on for the second time here. And you just look back through his form last campaign. Uh, he was really unlucky one day behind Smashing Eagle where he started short price favorite in Sydney. And then uh, the start after he went on to beat uh, Pirelli who had form around Tashi who um, runs second to Chain of Lightning, I think. So that form looks good enough for a race like this. He's, he is a horse that they've tried in a um, much better grade. Like he ended up, running in a group three at the end of the carnival and um he's running some some big races before but i think they've um they found a really good race for him and just thought with the way the map sets up he should just have the last crack and uh hopefully get over the top on the dry ground mm. light barrier six for him dk thoughts uh oh tough yeah even tough race um I, this end assembly sort of interested me here um you probably know it well from up your neck of the woods epic smart curry uh, burst some booming wins there at Toowoomba, then sort of went into stakes races and sat a, oh, it's had 10 or 11 months off. Now, turns up down here for Moody. Um, now, I don't know if it's, I mean, we saw it with the I wish I win and maybe being too harsh on the trials or, or the old Queensland thing. Is he trolling him in heavy shoes and things like that to make him look worse than what they are and whatnot? But these horses, like you, well, some of them, you couldn't back them out of the trials. It's a thing yesterday, Victory Command. It, it just went like an absolute walking machine in its trials and it, it um, went better at the races yesterday. It didn't set the world fire. Now, the point is, this thing's trolled good. Now, this thing, for Moody's things, it was only just trolling all average and fair. This thing's trolled up the lux. So um, I think uh, it's a bit of blank canvas about it. Uh, first up off the long spell for Moody. Don't mind the wide draw at the shoot at Bendigo. It, been watching a lot of shoot races at Bendigo lately. The wide draws are, uh, are winning their share of races. So, um, yeah, end assembly is a horse that uh, interests me in this race. Yeah, I thought it was uh, the definite danger. I do like Jay Mott. Jay Mott's on fire, I feel. I haven't got his stats on hand, but um, finally, oh, Walt's off, often critical of uh, Kira Ma's jockey <laughs> selections, but Jamie might be perfect for that one. He's a great man for a job. End of simply was talking about like, it's very hard to work out Mark Curry horses when they get moved on. They're very hard. But going to Moody, you it's definitely not a step backward, is it? So you'd expect it to at least hold its form. Mm. I actually was, I thought Garza Blanca trialed really poorly before that. First. I was keen to really be around him at that Kembla race. So I, I just, you know, maybe he can improve, but I'm. Jury's out on him a little bit for mine. Hmm. All right, so uh, you're getting good price both, though, four sixty and uh, six dollars. Let's have a look at uh, the next one. It's the uh, the gold bracelets, the fourteen hundred meter race, and Bella Rich is a favourite top sport. Four sixty into four dollars. Lady Jones five dollars. Nunthorpe six fifty. Surlio Miss seven dollars. Papillion Club seven fifty. Marble Arch ten dollars. Fire of Etna thirteen dollars. Shuffle Dance at sixteen. Vel Savoir the same quote. And then you've got Picaroon at twenty one. And better the rest. He's not hiding here, Nico. He's having a real crack. Bella Rich is the horse that uh, he likes here, and she comes uh, wide. Yeah, I think this is a proper race. You had Euphoric in behind her in the red and white. Um, Golden Path had no luck in the blue. They both go to the Golden Mile on Saturday. Reinberg, I was quite keen on this day. He had a poor recovery, dashing ran well. And I thought her run down the outside second up was um, was a run that she's, you know, suggests that she's absolutely back. She had a, a preparation last campaign where she was a bit in the wilderness, um, but you know, off her best form from the autumn prior. Gee, she was a, a mare with a lot of upside and that race raided through the roof. Um, she went back from a wide draw, didn't have the easiest run, but kept coming late, um, come home in some some quick sectionals. And I, I think that's just going to be a really hot form race. So um, looking how this race might set up for her, like the the inside draw, she's a, a mare that can take a position in her races. And on this day, Bendigo typically plays towards the rail. Um 
usually that's the spot to be and, and especially on speed. So I would have thought from barrier one that there's a huge opportunity she can land in the first four, get a nice soft run and she could just bring bringing in the best lead up form out of a very strong race last start. Um, yeah, I was surprised she was around 460 early in the betting. She's into $4 now and I think that will probably continue to tighten up. Um, there's a few other interesting runners here like Papillion Club was really good first up. It's really a miss. Best is definitely good enough but uh, she does have to carry 60 kilos first up and hasn't drawn well. She'll probably have to potentially be ridden a bit quieter than usual. Marble Arch is racing well um, and even Lady Jones was good first up but I just thought Ballet Rish brings in a very strong form line, fast rating race. I think if you want to back her, I'd be backing her now. Um, I think the market could really have a a real look at that race. She comes out of it Flemington and that, that could mean she starts a fair bit shorter than $4 with a potential pattern in favour from Barry number one. Mm, ultra consistent, uh, this runner, always trying, DK. She was. She just had those two blemishes at um, Caulfield, wasn't it, Nico? And then um, she went to – she had no luck uh, when she went to Flemington there, drawn low after those Caulfield runs. And then they, she was heavily backed over the carnival there as well. Just got too far back, so uh, uh, maybe it was something to do with Caulfield or something to do with that. Just that, what as a mare, what she, you know, the mood or whatever she was in at the time. But um, on her best, she looks, gee, she looks back in good order this prep. Um, and uh, the other, I thought, I've mean, always, always, I've always been a Lady Jones fan, and uh, this prep she trolled up, trolled up the Lux, and then from she's always been kicked off at fourteen hundred, and I thought, well, she must be back in good order because they kicked her off at twelve hundred there at Caulfield. That ain't she ran terrific. So now she's second up, got a good second up record. She's drawn five to stalk the speed. Um, she loves the 1400. So. She was well back first up. She was. It was yeah. 12 into $7. Yeah, so well. Yeah, over 1200 too. So, um, yeah, so I'd say she's she could have been back in, the, in for a really good prep, Lady Jones. So, uh, boys, uh, again, uh, making big cases for the first turn of the market. Bill Lady Rich, $4, and then Lady Jones, $5. It's an interesting card at Bendigo. You've got Roland High in the uh, the Guineas against War Machine, Sunshine in my pocket, who's undefeated, Mow down from uh, the Charlotte Littlefield Yard. Cracking little contest that. And then uh, the Golden Mile, you've got Macram, Bell Passeur, Golden Path, Euphoric. The race is just super deep. And then you've got like Chorton Lane, extra two, Bel Air. Um, whoa, you've got to have a quaddy on, on Saturday at Bendigo, I would have thought. Yeah, it looks a river meeting. And even the, the first few races, there's, there's a lot of depth as well. So, um, no, it's good to see the, the trainers supporting this meeting. And why wouldn't you? Bendigo's arguably the best provincial track in Victoria, if not Australia. So, um, I think away from the metros, it's, it's one of the best tracks we have. Hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's a big weekend there. They get a big crowd, and um, I've got mates go up there for their cricket trip. You know, they posse up there and uh, go to the races and have a big, big weekend up there. It's a, um, all the track managers, I think. I was hearing the track managers, they all have their weekend off, all the metro track managers, and get up there for the weekend on the drink as well. And uh, so, yeah, no, big weekend. Good good to see strong fields up there. Yeah, standing. Yours, uh, one of yours that you've been waiting for, Roll on High. You awake? You with me? Yeah, I'm with you. I just, um, Hello? He, he, Moody's doing some funny things, especially with that horse. I just. Yeah, I obviously haven't ever looked, but it's a, it's a talent at all. So I just don't know what he's doing with it. I don't must know what he pulled it out of this meeting up here. I the, think that, that the one the, the race that had up here must have just ripped the guts out of it by the same. Must have, it. must have. Mm. Given it time to recover. Let's have a look at uh, Sydney. Clear weather this weekend, which is uh, great to hear. Not sure how the track's going to come up, but uh, race two in the South Pacific Classic, 1,400 metres. Uh, market only here. Robrix $5. Midnight Opal, 7 Butch Cassidy, seven fifty. Raises Raises, uh, $8. Port Lockroy, eight fifty. dollars Abstract, $9. And then you got KZ, uh, $10. Lively, 11 He-Man, 14 Panic, $14. And that's the uh, the main chances there. Port Lockroy, you tipped last week, Walt, and you're gonna uh, they scratched it, saving it. Uh, obviously. Yeah, I blew up there, didn't I? Yeah, oh, actually, you, I actually yeah. didn't because I didn't know at the time. I blew up to you about 15 minutes after I left the show because I found out they worked mm. and scratch it for. So they, it was that uh, good uh, wide run at uh, Canberra Guineas. Just kept wasn't really entitled to be in the finish and only just got nutted by uh, Zadarski. Yeah, he dragged it out there too, which was. Um, you know, well, to drew wide, whatever, first up. And then, yeah, so they scratched it from a mile race last week from a wide draw to, to wait for 17 gate and 40, 1,400 here. But it's, yeah, it's 28 days between runs. They're probably a little query is hippo riding light. I was just uh, chatting to Donnie in the in between. That was when I zoned out with the Melbourne a little bit because uh, he was talking to me about, yeah, hippo riding 54 is a little bit of a query. But there's a lot of speed in this race, uh, well, definitely enough. And I just kept sort of coming back to him that he's the – Horse, it's a little bit more adaptable. I think he's going to be super strong no matter where he lands. So any sort of luck, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, three wide cover, this horse is going to run really well. Sting out of the track, certainly no drama. There's just not a lot of horses here that are, are very well set up or, 
huge upside, like Rob Rick's a little bit tricky from its draw. You can sort of make half cases for a few He-Man, Butch Cassidy maybe. Mm. Uh, there weren't too many that I really wanted to find, whereas I think this horse is the one horse that, you know, you're probably going to get $10 about now that could overcome uh, a tricky run and still be still be super strong. I, I think it's just a, I think it's a pretty good horse, to be fair. I, I don't know what she's trying to do with it, but, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm just more than happy to, to back this horse at $10 and, and, um, and be wrong uh, if I am wrong. Because yeah, I just think it stands out to me as a horse with a bit more upside than most of these. I'm happy to blindly follow you in here. Um, just at the weights, a couple of these horses look out of play, um, and I can just get confused the more I try and do the race. So the Port Lockroy for me There's too in many a race, similar just, horses, aren't they? Like, yeah, like, just don't get a you look at Butch anything. Cassidy, Robrick, Key Man, uh, Panic. They're, they're all going to run okay. Ken Didsky, Abstract, but yeah, he just sort of just. You know, I don't know what it is. Just sort of, uh, he'll get the extra highlighter uh, stroke. Is that what it is? That's all it is. That's mm. all it takes. Any, anything from the, the Melbourne boys here? Uh, any runners pick your interest? Nah, it look, looked a really deep race with a, a fair few chances. So, um, yeah, I haven't I haven't got around to it yet. But Rob Brick can probably improve off what he did last start, drawing wide and should be getting in the middle of the track. 1,400 will suit him. Um, but he was a little bit disappointing. He was a he was a forgive though, wasn't he? Like that's he, he's Hammond. definitely a scary horse. That um, and if he got the back of Port Locker or something, I, I wouldn't be really happy with myself in the run. But uh, he, he might get to a silly price too from that that awkward draw. Mm. Race five is the next one. Going to have a look at the Arrowfield Sprint. Osmosis a favourite here, three fifty into three ten. Schwartz five fifty. Jolly Star eight fifty. Learning to fly eight fifty. Arkansas Kid ten dollars. Hedged thirteen dollars. Corniche eighteen dollars. Red Resistance. Uh, $19 dollars rate Koki, uh, $19 dollars Mumbai Muse, similar quote, and uh, better the rest. Uh, for, we just have a look at uh, the trial of osmosis here. Um, just got uh, under well, complete stranglehold here and obviously missed the start first up, rattled off some good sectionals, complete forgive uh, in the uh, the Galaxy, despite being uh, a sort of a $10 shot in that uh, big group one. Yeah, so, just, just wanted to see it jump right and, um, and do everything right, which it did. The, the, I don't like asking trainers too much about where the horse is going, but Bjorn will be pissing himself that the one horse I've uh, spoken to him about is, mate, is this going to the Arrowfield because it looks unbeatable when it was like $14? It will not be going to the Arrowfield, but that was obviously before it uh, it had that mishap and, and sort mm. of the TJ was derailed. But this race, are you just, is that the only replay? No, we're going to have a look at uh, learning to fly yeah, in the surround stage first. too. So Tropical Score is the eventual winner of uh, this race, but uh, in the, uh, the Navy here, learning to fly. So ridden a bit closer. I think this was the fourteen hundred. So went twelve hundred first up off that long break and got that miracle inside run. And then and this day maybe just a little flat. Still, you know, a, a good performance. And she's super honest. But uh, for whatever reason, um, Annabelle's decided to freshen her up and and target this race. I think she's like forty two days since this run. So twelve fourteen back to twelve off a forty two day break. I actually don't mind that setup at all. I think that's. Um, that's pretty solid, and that was a very that was a little sit sprint race that race. So it certainly shouldn't have hurt her too much. Mm. That's Talk it. about the race now. Yeah, yeah. I just this race, like everyone, anyone who listens to me, they know that I'd I'd rather that uh, Schumacher wasn't riding Osmosis. That's for sure. But it does look pretty hard to mess up. It's um, from its perspective, perspective. Like you've got Red Resistance drawn wide, uh, the Instructor drawn wide, the Novelist is one of the fastest horses you'll find. Uh, Raya Koki's very, very fast. So they're going to fly here. And she, you know, all things equal. I, I hate barrier blankets with a passion, but they've put one on. I don't think the horse really even needs it. I, I don't really know what happened there last up, but just, you know, hoping that was an anomaly completely. And this horse should just land fifth, sixth. And I think that's how this horse will race best. It's never really had the opportunity to do that. Uh, obviously, last time it got ridden with a sit, didn't it? 25 lengths off him. But, um, uh, this time, hopefully, it's sort of sitting fifth, <laughs> sixth, seventh, something like that, and and should be extraordinarily hard to beat. Uh, learning to fly just is if they completely overdo it, and pattern depending here. If the inside's a little bit smelly and they're they're ripping down the middle, learning to fly looks an absolute nightmare to hold out because they are they are going to fly here. And if the inside's uh, the place to be, I think it's sort of osmosis. And I actually really like the even though it had perfect run on the back of Estrella. I, I like the way that Arkansas Kid profiles. I think it'll get the back of, of Osmosis or very close to it. And and with the mile form that he's got, I thought he was the obvious. If they're, if they're sort of back towards the insides, the place to be, those two are clearly the two. And if you can run on down the middle, learning to fly is going to be rocketing. 
Mm, I'd be uh, Nico launching Osmosis and then saving Arkansas Kid. I think they're the two best ways to play it and keeping it very simple. Thoughts, uh, Melbourne boys? Learning to fly. I think she she sets up perfect. There's good speed in the race, like Walt said, and she'll be just be getting down the middle. And if it's a, a day to be running on like it was last week, well, she's going to be hard to hold out, I would have thought. Just think 1,400 was a bridge too far. Last start just didn't have the same acceleration. The first up run was huge. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be having a crack there. I'm not sold on osmosis. I'm just not sold on that Coolmore form. It just doesn't seem to be standing up. Like, I'm unstoppable. Um, who's in third? Shinzo. Cylinder had a real off day. It just uh, feels a bit yuck for mine. So I'm I'm a bit against him at $3. Does have the Celestia legend form there. <laughs> he was Back having a ball <laughs> when he ran him, though. He was just poking around for the, for the autumn by the looks of it in the spring. He wasn't really – he wasn't the horse he was then now, you know? I wish it had a jockey. It's just, I just, I, I caught a, I hedged back towards your way a little bit more, like as in unloading, learning to fly if it's down the middle, maybe chop out on osmosis and um, and poke around on an Arkansas just because she could easily give it a dig in the ribs early and that could be game over for it. And then they could uh, rock and roll down the middle. If it had a J-Mac or someone similar or Blake Shin, oh, I I just I this just this race in particular I'd be so horned up to watch it just what what it could do coiled up fifth six with a with a good jockey on it mm. but so hopefully she um, has an out of body experience one two and twelve box exactor osmosis Arkansas kid and learning to fly and uh, move on to the next race which is race eight the Queen Elizabeth is the one we're going to have a look at here Via Sistine has got a stranglehold on the market here two dollars twenty Prodigy three seventy Cascadian eight dollars Mister Brightside nine fifty Plus the Carousel, $10, uh, Cheryl Wolf, 17 Buckaroo, 18 Lindemann, 21 Kovalika, 21 Zayrek rounding it out at uh, $91. Via Sestina had a bit of a track gallop here <clears throat> in the Ranvit Stakes and uh, last and widest in the white cap and just sort of trots up and uh, just then puts a, a gap on a real barrow trial. It's really worth watching both of these horses down the outside because they were both first up 2,000 here and this was like they went 26 below or something to the 600. So it was a literal joke. Uh, obviously, think it over, maybe he wasn't his best. He's come out and retired after this buckaroo ran okay up the inside. The other two will stay. So uh, you would say sort of bunchy finish, it's not that exciting, but it, it's the tempo there that's uh, really the most important part, whereas this horse here... Uh, prior to Jenny, she, she averages about 13 above to the 600 every time she races. So uh, that's the difference between what we saw in the first replay mm. and what we're going to see on Saturday is something more like what we're seeing here in the Australian Cup. So uh, from a setup point of view, both DK and, and yourself, which uh, who's, who sets up best to, to take out this race? Who wants to go first? Well, I'll go first. DK yeah. trolling me. So the, I, I honestly think that that was an absolutely perfect uh, pipe opener for a horse like Via Sustainer. It was really important. She drew a gate, so she's not going to be that extra three or four horses back. I still think she'll be sort of midfield at best, but um, I think she's going to run extremely well. And I, the, the interesting part is uh, that she raced first up 2,000 there, and, and basically all her forms between 1,800 and maybe 2,100, she's won at, but basically 2,000 metres. So she doesn't really have that profiler of a – uh, a mile and a half horse here, whereas Place to Carousel does. So I honestly think they're the two horses, and Via Sustina obviously is, is the starting point from my opinion, and I'm I'm really wary of the other. I can't understand why it's $13 as opposed to sort of $2.30 because I think they should be naturally a lot closer in, in betting. And, um, you know, I've become a huge fan of this prior to Jenny, but I think she sets it up for the two uh, international mares. Cascadian? You know, I'm just taking the line that, that that they're better horses than Cascadian. Like he's that's that's what I, the way I've sort of looked at it and made the final decision is that Cascadian got over the top of Pride of Jenny, and I just don't think he's uh, he's still he's a great horse, but I just don't think he's the benchmark. Uh, and if and if he is, I think these two uh, internationals are just better than him. DK, what do you like? In, uh, do you like that uh, that soft little pipe opener or do you like the horses that have run in a, a more genuine race? I always like a softer pipe opener because I think it's more fresh legs in spring. But the thing with Bright of Jenny is it does those horses, will they think what a bit of what, what I found out with the tissue with Chris Waller because he said the way Bright of Jenny runs her races, it doesn't suit a tissue, right? Mm. It doesn't suit it. So it's, do, will those horses be suited by the way where they, where they sit in the run and the way Pride of Jenny runs those sectionals, as Walt said, 13 above, will they be suited now? It suited Cascadian perfectly. Back, suck, suck. 
You knew he's got to be strong late. 2000, he won that race last year. A tissue was too close. Mr. Brightside was too close. He, he way out of his comfort zone chasing Brighter Jenny in that scenario. So he's going to have to go back, do a few different things. So um, will those, as Walt said, he thinks they will. The, the international mayors have proven over more ground. Um, but will they be suited to the way Brighter Jenny runs those races? That's yeah, a question great. Of you. Yeah, that's, uh, great. Yeah, great angle. Love that. The horse that. <clears throat> the horse that I think is big odds, uh, stepping up from uh, the Mo the Doncaster Mile is Cove Leaker. And it's really surprising that this horse is, ha hasn't been out to 2,000 metres for quite some time. It's really surprising it's not running around at Goulburn today. <laughs> Have you been watching how bad it's going? Yeah, I know. But I, maybe it's, it's the greatest training horse. performance I've ever seen in my life. It's more gone than me. <laughs> and I'm pretty gone. Have a look at me. I've been sick for three weeks. I've been gone for 15 years. It's gone. And Chow Wolf, I'm I'm not convinced that uh, 2,400 back to 2,000 meters. Those two should be in a in a in a match race. Maybe 15 minutes after this race runs, that would be a better race. Where you put a couple of hurdles there, a couple of donkeys running down the outside <laughs> fence, and they should be like that form can't be the right form for this. Can't Nick, be. Nico, any angles for Walt to shoot you down? Just like I've just been uh, put no. on the cross. No, I got nothing. Looks looks hard. Like Via Sestina. Like was that a race first up? No. Is it a could be a proper horse? Yes. Like. Prior to Jenny, she's going to have to come and get her. 2,000, I can see Walt's angle. If it's, if it's a better horse than Cascadian coming to get her, well, there might be one here that is that. So um, I think I just stick fact for Mr. Brightside. He obviously just had an off day the other day and he'll go back, he'll hit the line. That'd probably be the horse I'd back in the race, but with absolutely no confidence. Looks a, looks a nightmare race. Mm. Oh. 13, 14 bucks, this place to carousel has to be the, has to be the, the, the wrong price, I think. Mm, I'd be betting around. I'd, yeah, I'd be taking Cascadian, place the carousel, and uh, the herd like Co Covalica. And I'd, that two dollars twenty just looks. Like, looks so you like know how they gold. bet margins. You know, like if you win by, if you got like, can you back minus <laughs> eight and a half or something? Like, can you get a, like an eight and a half link boost on Cascadian? <laughs> I'll still give you six dollars. Yeah, that'd be all right. You might just <laughs> take that, that back. Like, edit that, that out, would you, Borco? Edit that out. Head start. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so we, we we bleach your hair if Kavlika wins. Mate, I won't do the mug thing because I don't have a Zoom big <laughs> enough no to find my old do, fella. Mate. But uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I mean, if it wins, I'm happy to do whatever you like. It, it, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Racing's finished if that horse wins the QE2. Group 1, DK, did you have a tip here or no? No, no, I don't have a tip. I'll be, I'll be a good watch race for me, Scoot. Cheer, cheer, I'll live, cheer and name the Victorians, of course, but um, no, watch race. Mm, Enjoy the spectacle. Be interesting to see how... Um, how uh, Mr. Brightside bounces back. It's a um... wouldn't you love it to just uh, Craig Williams to come out and say, "Listen, they've given me <laughs> tactics, but I'm not listening to them. I'm doing my own thing here. It's to explode down the middle and win." I'd actually cheer that home as uh, as big as anything because Stranger you can see he was a victim last night. It was a joke. He just kept pushing it into a spot he didn't want to be, and uh, the poor horse was just yeah, as DK said, completely out of his comfort zone throughout. He could he could, he could improve significantly. Back. It's a, it's a massive possibility, and it's a it is probably the most interesting. Race on the card there, I think it should be a great race. Mm. Just uh, and you get ten to one to find out. Can you? Ten to one yeah. or something. Yeah. If you don't like the favourite, yeah, mm. yeah, take it on. So we're, uh, yeah, be very wary, Vesestine, if you're uh, tuning into the uh, the short odds there. So it's going to be a mouth watering cl clash. Racingwatch.com.au is uh, what you can where you can find uh, Walt uh, in his uh, Telegram or Discord channel, and he also is uh, doing the kick streams. Are you doing the stream this Saturday? Mate, never stop. Streaming, hey? streaming. Might want to go on Friday night to talk crap. We just, just never stop. I just like hearing the yeah, the sound of my own voice. I enjoy it. It's great. Beautiful. Different uh, different kettle of fish and different cat old Walt, but uh, he'll be there Saturday, so make sure you check it out. All right. Uh, last week, no good starry odds. So uh, I've gone three straight, and then I've gone uh, two into the bin. So I'm going to shake it up a bit and uh, put a bit of a spotlight on Morfittville for my best of the week or my black booker. Morfittville race seven is the race I'm going to have a look at here. I thought uh, Molly Nickers might be a false favourite, so I, I thought I'd uh, try and find the right bet here. $3.10, not sure she's looking for 1,800 metres. Vivier's four forty. dollars Quicks to $5, Wings of Song, nine fifty. dollars Coco Sun, nine fifty. dollars The Autumn Bell, $16, Just a Boom, 26 and you can get much better the rest. The horse I uh, like here is Vivier. I thought uh, this is a uh, 
a horse that's looking like it wants a bigger track and it wants uh, 1,800 metres. She was a great run first up, Vivier, and uh, was something beat at Flemington, which was a big track. And then uh, she was sort of slow out and they just plocked her out the back. And there's Molly Nickers um, not sort of going anywhere and Vivier's just going straight past her. And if they add another 200 metres, um, she puts a massive margin on that horse. Not sure why. Molly Nickers has come up uh, 310. I thought Vivier should be installed the favourite here. Gets uh, a nice draw here. Vivier's drawn four. Molly Nickers has drawn 12. So that's um, further pressure on the Moody Runner. And it's a bit of a theme of the show. Uh, the Moody Runners, or the Moody Stable, just going. Uh, the other horse that uh, is a Moody Runner that uh, is going well and won a, a listed race last start over 1,600 is Quickster. Uh, concede uh, she's a good chance in the race at sort of $5, but uh, I thought Vivier should sort of be the $3 favourite here. And there's another one uh, that Nico will know about, Wings of Song. She's in the race too at $9.50. She's got that picket fence and uh, coming off a bit of a freshen from the, uh, the Tassie Oaks. Uh, she'd be a danger but drops back in distance and then the other horse that I thought was a bigger danger is uh, from the McAvoy yard who just had a nice little uh, squirt out over 1400 at Sandown uh, against Patchouli Dream and Indian Jewel and Vividness in the uh, benchmark 64 and that was uh, Coco Sun but again she has to uh, start from barrier 11 and she could have a work cut out so third up Vivier uh, $4.40 um, I can see uh, this horse starting with a three in front of it, and it was one of my black bookers. So that's the horse that uh, I definitely want to be with, and I think the key is going to be this big um, Adelaide track. She's just crying out for a uh, a big roomy track. She's a big horse, and uh, she got a dynamite finish. So she's my uh, better of the week this week. Nico, a couple of horses that you know uh, quite intimately here. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, like it looks gone off last up, Molly Nickers. You couldn't, you couldn't back her with stolen money. I wouldn't have thought. I was like biggest fan in the spring, and I just don't know if she's come up this autumn. Like mm. off that last run, like a horse in the spring, I was wanted to back her in anything. Look out of the yard, and on last like two, what was it, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was like around her big. She just, like I said, just doesn't look like she's come up. So. Yeah, you could be around her. Quick start was a good win last start, but um, yeah, she she did show herself a little bit up first up in that maiden at Sound. I don't know what you thought, DK, yeah, no, but I, agree. I thought that was a bit of a yeah, bit no. of a nicky run. Yeah, and uh, look, Vivi is a line finder, as Scoot said, always has. You know, from the day I think when it won its maiden at Geelong or wherever it was, and um, yeah, that's was the it was vulnerable the other day. The market said it was vulnerable, and it was vulnerable. The market knew it went back to last around Mooney Valley, so basically had none. Ran well, gets onto the bigger track third up. It's a good platform, so. Uh, I can, uh, yeah, no, agree with your angle there, Scooty. I've always been a big fan of Coco Sun. Yeah, t talented horse, isn't she, it? She'll be, she'll be really suited in the um, the two thousand meter race, the Group One, which all these fillies will go to. But sad day might not be a day, but she's um, she's got that. a race in her. Mm. And that's what I thought with the at wide gate. Um, the McAvoy's might just uh, back off for a bit, give her a run. Uh, they tend to do that with a lot of their horses. They can sort of be a bit of a yo-yo stable and they might be trying to peak her for uh, a later day. But th this just seems um, perfect distance, perfect setup, as DK says, platform and line finder. So chips in Vivier and uh, fingers crossed we uh, we get the result there. Punningform.com is how I do all of my form. So uh, match your tape watching skills with the data and uh, you can bet anywhere that you choose to bet. So they bet Australia, they bet Hong Kong, so it's a, a must-have. Last week, uh, Donny uh, threw out extra gear. The boys uh, were keen on that uh, lambing runner. I thought it went pretty well. Knocked up late and uh, fell into third. But this week, he's uh, he's got his shirt off. He's ready to go, Donny, for Doombin. G'day, lads. Sydney Cup weekend. Cannot wait to get down there. One best bet comes up in Brisbane, yeah. race six, extravagant star. Comes out of the same race that uh, Chain of Lightning won last start. Um Good four lines, good gate, good map. I think it should be winning. The other one is user pin in race one at Doomy. Good luck. He's on the detail on that user pin, I thought. He's on the <laughs> he's on it's on the daddy daycare duties there. He um breastfeeding. It's like he's had a bit of an edible there. He's <laughs> looks a bit half whack there, don't he? <laughs> it was, don't want to get the child services I, I, in there, but yeah, crikey. I was gonna say that's hey? uh, that's pretty much the angle I'd be taking. I wouldn't be sharing that with too many people, that video. He might he might have one of those male, you know, those male 
you know those yeah, fake yeah, the pump on fake the yeah, pump yeah, yeah, yeah. where they put the milk on the on the fake teat. He might be breastfeeding off one of those. <laughs> Crocky. When he sent that through, I nearly fell off my chair. So I'm happy I've shared that with someone else because um, needs to be seen to believe that stuff. But uh, race six on a more serious note, number seven, extravagant star. So well placed there, according to Don. Got some, some um, strong form on. So two dollars sixty. Um, it'll be chips in. So. His horses get uh, very heavily backed when he when he likes or declares one of his best. So, all eyes on that one. Top Sports Steam Regal Am- Asmon uh, last week was five hundred six fifty. So good result there, and uh, a lot of peppering around for the Ramwick card and uh, a couple of races we haven't previewed. So get more of your insights here. Well, this is looks a beauty race four number one Lady Camelot thousand at two dollars ninety. If it's got four legs and it's breathing, looks hard to beat. Yeah, the draw certainly all opened it up, and it's just a really strange. And I actually thought uh, that I'd never seen a slipper winner run in a Percy Sykes, but apparently Kiyomichi did. But it was two fifty out to five fifty, and uh, ran last. Ooh. And uh, the stable mate was fourteen dollars to five dollars and got beat a nostril. Um, oh, so yeah yeah, 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 that was it. Flip. So um, and I think Timmy won the race. He was the one who told me he's like, "You're an idiot." Kim- Kiyomichi ran in it. I was like, "Oh, fair enough." But uh, regardless, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, certainly adds an angle. It's probably like yeah, you know, Anisa went huge in the in the slipper driftings. A horse on the up. I thought more territories was. The, oh Jesus, I've just seen it's twenty six into thirteen. I was going to say twenty six dollars was a ridiculous price. Its debut was huge, and there's a horse in here that's a hundred and fifties that I think is a really good horse called Diddle Dumpling. It's got Reggie on it from gate one, but. It's probably the best 150 to one chance um, I've seen for a while as in a as in a quality of horse. In uh, yeah, it's a it's a really good race this this race. But um, yeah, betting wise, I don't know what you'll do. Mm. I don't know what you'll do. Oh, well, as Walt says, it'll tell the story. If she stays firm in the market, she's probably going to take some holding out. Uh, she's a class act, but how much horse le- has left after a uh, a lengthy campaign? The next bet here is in race seven, and this horse has got the Mark Twain form. So uh, race seven, number 15, mostly cloudy, $523. A good bet now into 19. Got Rachel Schumacher on. And, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, third in the Roy Higgins, beaten 0. 0.7 to Mark Twain, the Strawberry Rock. So got 51.5 kilos here. So a nice little weight drop and... Crikey, where do you start with uh, this race? I've got NFI here, but um, all I know is the Circle of Fire. I was hoping it'd show up in a two thousand metre race last start in a benchmark seventy. It came out and won that race quite well the other day, but it beat a couple of horses that was sort of second up, a very ordinary race, and now shows up favourite in <laughs> from gate fifteen with some fella Andrea, obviously he's a good jockey a, that I've never Z- heard of having. I'm assuming Zeddy. his first ride to Australia. Um, it's one of the weirdest f- f- priced horses I've ever seen in my life. Surely. Uh, circle of fire but yeah good race to go looking um but i think you'll find more freddy krueger than you'll find um you know uh, sunshines and rainbows it looks like a pretty scary race uh, it's definitely not my cup of tea is, is this race anyone's cup of tea nico could be your cup of tea oh i, I think if mark twain was here it'd be absolute moral so i think Agreed. that lead up form could be could be quite strong that's none of them are coming out of proper race it's like the tankard was a sit and sprint um, even that race, mostly um, Circle of Fire was in, which wasn't a fast run race. That that could be the best lead up, the uh, the Roy Higgins. And that was twenty four, wasn't it? And it was going what like uh, I, I think it ran. I think it was second up two thousand, third up twenty four. So it's come off two slowish run. Well, it got, it got a barrier trial behind Weimark, and it's got to run thirty two hundred. It'd want to be a bloody natural stayer. Right? Cheapest creepers. Mm. Next bet here is uh, Ramwick Race 9, number 14, to $608 Tropical Squall. Uh, was good in the Coolmore, if that's – yeah, that's was, that was a race. It was okay, and I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Timmy had the choice between this and Osmos, which, and it surprised me he went Osmos' way, and I, mm. I'm not saying that that's a big detraction from my Tropical Squall, but Osmos is 25 to 1. Maybe it's a better pointer to have something on it. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a very – uh, open race. I was surprised that they scratched the gotcha from what looked an absolutely perfect Doncaster until I saw this, and it's just you know perfect weight for age mile. So gotcha gate one, good old J Mac, the Marble King. Uh, looks like it's going to be very hard to beat. I, I, I'm still I just can't. I, I was a big Tropical Score fan last prep, and I just I can't love her anymore. I just I I, I think if I'm betting in this race, she's beating me. Um, the funniest thing was Ruthless Dame being third favourite, but I see it's out to twenty to one now. That makes more. More sense to me. I, yeah, I think Waller's got a big hold on this race. Mm. Mm, the tissue and uh, Zoo Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a bit great up. Nico? I'm a big fan. I'm on Tropical Score. I think she's set to peak third up. Should be suited rising in distance. And if she rolls at a genuine tempo, 
a few of those horses like a tissue. Zugotcha looks set to peak, but she'll need a lot of luck from an inside draw. I think she this is this is her right distance range the mile. So um I think she'll give it a huge shake. Mm. The other yeah. horse, it's a silly price there, is Renaissance Woman. Just doesn't run 2,000. And uh, if that 2,000 didn't knock her around, back to a mile, JP, 50 to 1. So just a silly price in this, Crazy. this race. Yeah. Mm, $10 the place is absolute insanity for that that runner. I uh, could definitely entertain that if you are going roughy hunting for sure. And the last one here is uh, race two, number nine over in Adelaide, and it's Trembles. Uh, it's a first starter for the uh, Anthony and Sam Friedman yard. Trembles, I, mate, you're thinking about going to Morfordville race too, so you're the one that trembles in a different way. I love it. I get uh, <laughs> I get a bit like Donnie. I take my shirt off and uh, I'm ready for action. Uh, uh, Two-year-old filly, don't know much about this one. I do see it's out of the mare earthquake by too darn hot, $2.60. Anyone know anything about this horse? No, uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything from it. I had seen yeah. Cosmic Ride. It looks... Looks just a horse off its jump outs, I would have thought. And then, then you got Harper Lee and Dancing Storm, who we backed last start at Mini Valley, who was just mm. a run. So, yeah, if she's um, she's probably jumped out very well looking at the market play early. So, um, yeah, maybe where there's smoke, there's fire there. No, if they're tipping it, if they're, if they're, it's, yeah, they're taking it there for a reason. And so they're taking five to two and it's in the 250 and it runs evens. It, from this camp, it'll be very hard to beat. What about hmm. that Arcana, that Arcvana or whatever, first up at Echuca the other day? Did you see it, Nico? No. It was like great Down horse. Down the outside? Four, yeah, 1,400, 1,600, yeah. 1,700 metres. First up at 1,200, outside draw, 350 into odds on. Guess what happened? Pretty he rode it like up. it was a dollar one cent chance, didn't he? Like he yeah. had no, he was never panicking at any stage. I said, oh, it's going to be last, it's first up, and then just watching the money just pour in for it. I'll just, this will just win. I know, I've seen it for this camp before. It'll just win. Mm. And it just rounded yeah. them up. Around a dollar seventy or something on the to. totes, dollar eighty. I was waiting for him to get busy. I don't know why. I was watching it. I'm like, look at this guy. Like, what's he doing on this thing? And he just sort of sorted his way down the middle, like he knew he was on Winks. It was quite funny to watch. Yeah, Stanny. There you go. Little Winks reference. Good Little camp. Winks. Good day, Very good camp. Sure, I did see Deb, Deb's on Twitter too, Debbie Capitas. Well, I might have to get her on the show one Probably day. Probably owns it. Good luck yeah. to her. We'll get Matt Welsh and then we'll get Debbie on. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's the uh, that's us for the top sports steamers. DK last week, stylish. B Shin, he's your man. He well, wants go. him on osmosis. Well, he wants him on we're, loading we're, fly. He wants him on everything. We're due for a good watch. And as I said the week before at Kerrang, it was all over after two strides. The wrong yeah. way. This was all after, nearly all over after two strides. And B Shin just flew the gates, put it outside the leader, had a nice time of it, and just sailed away. So we were due for a um, a nice watch and, and got one there. God bless him, B Shin. So. Uh, yeah, no, he's a gun rider, went up to Sydney and rode winners. But having said that, I went, again, obviously gravitated towards him tonight at um, Pakenham. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there's some B-shin tax involved tonight. He's on about four odds on chances. Everything's just really short tonight, so um, I couldn't really. I'd have to go too short there. So, um, no, limited options for me, um, Scoot. So we'll just go. We'll just have a little two-bet play at um, race two at Geelong tomorrow. It is a distance maiden, so... Bet accordingly. They're no stars, but uh, four and five. Uh, race two, number four, Baltic Way. Mitch Friedman, Johnny Allen, set to elevate up in trip on the bigger track. It wasn't suited. Hit got home good first up at Bendigo um, and then wasn't suited at Yarra Glen, so ready to go. But it's just drawn barrier one. And I think Mick Price's Cara Corans had basically three clean-up runs. Just was out the – wasn't just nice on the de debut over a mile. Don't know what Froggy was doing at going wide on the turn at Stony Creek. Gave it none. And then got went back to last and got home nicely. Uh, both of them line up through a horse called Dandruff. Their form sort of intertwines. Dandruff bolted in the twenty four hundred maiden at whatever it was at Swan Hill on Monday. So I think um, I think they look these two look set to elevate on the nice Geelong circuit. They're over twenty two hundred on Friday. So I don't know one might be eight bucks and four or five bucks or something might be enough in it to back but back them both hopefully. So uh, Cara Coran and Baltic Way outstanding Geelong Friday race two. I All got right. uh, I got tipped a horse of B Shins was it yesterday? Sits outside the leader in about a two thousand meter race. I reckon Shin lifted it six times down the straight. He found a sort of neck six times and then got bobbed. It was one of the sickest things ever. Oh, that he's riding Amphactor? as well. Was it Am Factor? On the inside, yeah, that was it. Am Factor. Oh my god, he was. Uh, you could see every time he, he just tried something different, change whip hands, change this. He just kept finding and finding. He's, he's riding as well as anyone. There is absolutely no doubt. Good. 
That's it. All right, we're uh, we've got uh, no weather to worry about this week, and it'll be uh, smooth sailing into uh, Randwick. Bendigo uh, standalone meeting looks an absolute corker, and uh, hopefully uh, DK gets us off to a winning way in Geelong. Reminder: Adelaide Carnival's kicking off, and then we've got uh, the Queensland Winter Carnival uh, starting in a couple of weeks' time. So pumped up! Great uh, time of year to be betting, and uh, make sure you do it with patience and. Uh, Hopefully you have a fill up this weekend and uh, we found you a couple. So good luck, happy punting, and make sure you uh, you check out Top Sport and Punting Form. They'll help you as well. We'll see you next week.